In the movie of your life, how do you want to die? Studies suggest 80% of Americans prefer to die at home, but 60% end up dying in a hospital. That's just one of the poignant end of life decisions explored in the Netflix documentary, Extremis. We love you, Selena. Yes, we do. We're not gonna leave you by yourself. We just actually touch her, Father God. You know, the doctors say one thing, but we know that you, the doctors, mm -hmm. the doctors, mm -hmm. Father God, and the Lord of Lords, mm -hmm. Father God. Yes, you know, even though my mom may be in this situation, it would feel like murder to yeah. pull her life support. That's what it would feel like to me. We're gonna support mm -hmm. you through this. This is Absolutely. very painful for you and your family. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to help you make a decision that's right for your mom. My mom already made her decision, and that's how come her heart is still beating. She can go at any time, but she knows to stay here because she loves me. And if I were to pull that life support, okay. there'll be no me. Extremist filmmaker Dan Krauss and intensive care doctor Jessica Zitter joins us. And first of all, I wanna applaud <laughs> you because this is such an important subject. We are so uncomfortable talking about end of life care in this country. We were just watching you in that clip in a scenario, what, what happened after that? She lived for about another five months, five or six, five or six months on, on the machines. Um, most of the time in our hospital, um, she had stabilized enough to leave the intensive care unit and go upstairs to one of the regular wards. Um, but she remained attached to the machines uh, until she died. And I understand the documentary, another woman featured Donna died in a much different way. Yes, Donna's family decided to withdraw the uh, artificial support um, and take away the breathing machine, and she passed away about 24 hours later. And the point here isn't that, there, isn't that there's a one-size-fits-all approach, but the message here is that we are all so uncomfortable with these conversations, and at the end of the day, the most important person is the one who's going through the process of dying. I want to ask you, after making this film, I'm curious, in your own world, has it changed the way you approach death in your own life or those of your family members? You know, I'm still very uncomfortable with the topic. It's very hard to discuss it with your loved ones. It's very hard to discuss it with um, anyone uh, in your life in a way that feels, you know, organic because it's not a topic that we gravitate to naturally. And um, yet, when we get to a point where um, it becomes necessary to make a decision, we wish we had had that conversation prior. So it's, you know, it's part of the culture that I think we, particularly in America, have a real issue discussing death comfortably with well, each one, other. one of the issues that I've seen a lot in my career, which is very difficult, and I want people to think about this, sincerely think about it. I read this statistic that 80% of individuals would prefer to die at home. It doesn't mean that it's inappropriate to come to the hospital, of course. But what I see all too often in the emergency department, maybe the toughest thing of all, is when someone has laid out a very clear plan for what they want and the way they want to die and they want to die at home, and yet in that last minute of panic, they come rolling into the emergency department, mm -hmm. uh, literally on death's doorstep, and instead of dying in peace, they die in a place that even though I work there, is it's not a place of peace. Do you think that's because of the lack of discussion or do you think that some of it also is those of us around people who are dying, we panic? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's part, is that not part of the education here? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a relatable impulse, right? I mean, I can un imagine making that same decision in that moment of panic myself. Yeah, I think that we need to be talking about this and making it a part of our national conversation as just a rote part of our, our culture, the way we used to teach, you know, sex education used to be considered taboo and something that we wouldn't go and talk to kids about. And I think we should start thinking about whether or not we want to have a more of a national conversation uh, about bringing death into the conversation for high school students in a non-threatening way, but really making it something that we're more comfortable with at an earlier age so that we can talk about these things. I'm really excited to see this film. I, I congratulate both of you for bringing it uh, to the audiences. The film is called Extremis. It's on Netflix. <laughs> we'll be right back.